I'm really pleased with today. From where we've been at, this game has been some of those benchmark games every year. And look, because we use some of our young kids and we see what our academies are doing and, and how we develop those players. And when you look at today, you look at Matt Whitley, Brad Walker, and Ted Chapelhow, and Deck Hume in the back of that as well. And then Grant Gold plays a big part, a big stint of the game. It was really pleasing for for us as an organisation to our academy and lads that have pushed through and been as and has been as good as they've been today in this game because it's not always been the case over the first three years and the score lines probably dictated that when we've gone to that kind of side in this warm -up, these warm -up games with some of our younger players the score lines blown out a little bit and I thought today didn't get anywhere looking like it was going to blow out with or say we worked really hard down to 12 men I can see the tries when we had 12 men on the field. So yeah, I was, like I say, I'm happy with where we are and the one thing you can't, it's really hard to put into a side at this stage of your pre-season is enthusiasm and effort and I know you saw that in Joey Miller's chase back in a couple of other sides when we bro they broke our line and they picked, they picked the ball up off average kicks from us and went the full length of the field but that determination to get back behind the ball was there for all to see. I don't like you saw that in our fans as well, I think they appreciated it. You saw how enthused they were by the energy and effort and enthusiasm that the team showed in the calls for them. It's been mentioned that in the rule changes refs are going to be a little bit more decisive in making calls on the field. Was the way that game ref was refereed tonight a little bit of an eye opener for you with three yellow cards? No, I just like the referee to make more decisions anyway, I think that's his job. It's decisive, yeah. And, but where we are and the yellow cards I think they, they have given them a choice of using yellow cards for foul play I think the discipline the players has got to be great but then again the, the referees have got to make those decisions on the hoof and, and they're only going to get better at them by looking at making them in these games I think today what he could have done was he sort of said oh, that's going to be a yellow card told the player involved mm -hmm. let me know after if he spoke to me like there was possibly two yellow cards in that game mm -hmm. he'd need to tidy up this and this and then we all get something out of it, don't we? I can see those things. Myself and Tony get to see 13 against 13, which we're going to have to cope with for a majority of the year. And the referees had to, had to make those decisions understand what the game is. Disappointed not to get any points on the board, Dennis? No. no I'm not disappointed at all in anything today. So we created a couple of opportunities, we should have probably put the ball down. But... Again, it's, it is what it is, and it's hard to turn it into something that it's, that it's not today. And sounds like, but it's they've not played for three or four months. A lot of these lads, some of the, some lads have come back, and we've got four or five lads that haven't trained for six weeks. They've trained for three or four weeks. It's their first, like they get that 25 minutes on the field. We carry 20 plays, we roll out subs and subs on and off. So there's always going to be that little bit of lack of consistency and continuity in the side that creates those differences and all it does is gives lads a taste of what it's like to play in a situation where you've got a crowd and you've got a little bit more on the line, the, the hits are a bit harder and they're a bit more ferocious and the contact just means a little bit more that you can't get in a training session so it was, that's what it was today, it was a little bit of hardening up and a little bit of that understanding what the game is as, as we move forward and those elements of working under a bit of fatigue and a bit of pressure when there's somebody screaming and shouting and making a noise around you and not just quiet and your players talking in a training session. Benefit of the game being postponed and then delayed is that you be able to give a couple of lads who were in the squad initially a bit of game time? Yeah, well, again, this, I'd, I'd rather have played this game. It messes everything up that I've doing and we've worked out, we worked out pre-season and you sit down and you plan and you put things in place and you know people are going to be back and you know what we're placing talent in. 10 days time and what that game is and what it was has changed a little bit so you have to alter, you have to go on the run so this this game it's one of those things I don't know if we make a decision to say let's play a, a set of pitch that's never going to be called off and go with that every year so it's always going to be on <laughs> if we're going to play this at Christmas time let's play it at Christmas time and then we can plan and we can stay consistent I know it's, I, I was, was really impressed with the crowd today and I thought that, thought when we turned up and it was pouring down the rain and we left, I was a bit, I was going to think that I feel I might be disappointed with the people that are travelling or like people that have bought tickets that might not turn up because 
it's not over Christmas, they've had to go back to work. It's, I thought they might have been a bit disappointed, but the, both sets of fans were fantastic. Well, there's only 3,000 odd people here, but on Wednesday night, pouring down the rain on a delayed game was, was really good. Is there anyone that, uh, that's likely to be fit for St Helens game that didn't feature today? Yeah, um, Eamon O'Carroll, Danny Tickle, Lisa Ambry, Danny Galeo. They'll all be available for the St Helens game. How long have they been? Uh, how many weeks has that put them into their sort of scheduling in, in terms of pre season? Um, Danny Galea has been rolling in and out. He went on for Christmas to see his family in Australia, but he's been here a big block of six weeks, went on for a couple of weeks, come back, and he's done another couple, another couple of weeks. And he's only just really in his second week back where to play him this soon might have been, after he's just took not long off playing, was a bit wrong, and same with Reese. Um, Eamon O'Carroll's, I said, just about three weeks into being full contact, the same with Danny. Danny Tickle, it just seemed no reason to play them tonight. Like I said, this wasn't a game that they were scheduled to be involved in. I had other players that I wanted to use that said, I didn't want to put 27 people on the pitch. And now they'll look to be involved against St. Helens. Has everyone come through at OK tonight? It, at the moment, everybody seems good. 